Well, we had a lot of bad families on the estate at the time. We had shotguns, arguments with shotguns, and there was a lot of break-ins and robberies. And it was just to try and make a better place to live. Women, when working, would talk to each other over the back garden, hanging out the clothes. They'd go to the shops and they'd pop next door and have a cup of tea. A lot of that stopped. Yeah. They were worried because so many houses were being broken into. They would snatch bags from people. And I came with another older nun. She was 20 years older than me. And we ended up at Wingrove. And we did voluntary work initially with victim support people and people like that, you know. It was at that point that two people from the housing estate came to see Honor and myself and asked if we would help them to form an association. And so we said, yes, we would help them. And they had nowhere to meet because they didn't have a, a house or anything then. And they used to meet in each other's houses to decide what they were going to do next. And we went and fought with the council, you know, to give them a base. So they gave us a base, two houses which were riddled with asbestos. <laughs> they were going to knock them down, but we had to pay rent. So we had to do all kinds of things to raise funds. There was a very good core of volunteers because they wanted to get back what they'd had on that estate, which was a very good estate. And they were the people who got together and said, we want to do something to stop this, you see. Yeah. Well, there was Sheila Jen. It was her and Kim Bell and her husband, Billy Gallagher and Sylvia Gallagher. They were about the first five that started it. And they started off selling raffle tickets in each street, 10 pence a ticket. So when they were coming round selling the tickets, she asked me if I would be involved then, and that's how I got involved. Well, we just used to meet in Sheila's dining room once a week to um, reckon all the money up and uh, fold the tickets up and do the ticket draw. But that's all we're doing in the beginning. Sheila did organise a trip to Blackpool. There was two 53-seater buses, that's how many people were involved. And then eventually the council gave her a house on this site. They used to come across on the afternoon and that for a coffee, you know, even when it, they came for the bingo when the bingo was on. But they called in, the loads of residents in this street called in through the week and it was just like an open house of yes, coffee and yes. tea. And Flory Ford, she started off making soup. And we used to come in and pay for a bowl of soup and a piece of stotty cake and a cup of tea. And Especially when we started the credit union as well. Got a lot of the community in that hadn't come in at the time. They'd never came in before. Yes. But they started coming in for the credit union on a Friday. And some of them would stop and have a cup and a chat. Mm -hmm. Poor families got involved with loan shocks. And I mean, they used to take their family allowance book and what had them off you to get their money. They could save what they wanted, any amount, and it didn't have to be any every week if they couldn't do it. But when they saved for ten weeks, they could apply for their first loan. I had gone to Todd's Nook because yes. I wanted to learn how to do decoupage. And I had been going there for that, and I mentioned it to Sister Honour, and she went... I'll see if I can find you a tutor. And we're doing, like, one course, then we're doing an advanced course. Anyway, from that, the council gave away the house next door and knocked just like a doorway through. And then, of course, we had the big field out the back because the bungalows went there. In the six weeks holidays then, the council would just afford for you to have a worker for two weeks. And we yes. had a big thing in there. In the field behind, we had a big marquee, all the food in. We had the 
That's the army cadets came with a mm-hmm. little rifle mm-hmm. range and we had like jumble and cake stalls and stuff like that. And we were playing sack races and egg and spoon races and stuff for the kids. It was great. The great big bouncy cattle we had. Well, I would be 62 and I'm 88 now, so that's quite a long time ago. And there were several people who died since then. Anne's husband, my husband, one of the ladies who used to come and her husband. I met Andrea in um, the West Road School, as it was then, because we used to have little out places. But we did um, computing there and we did calligraphy, which we all enjoyed. Uh, batik, silk painting. We did um, a recipe book and we decorated it uh, in our own uh, in our own way. And we all put a recipe in, and then it was printed for us. I mean, for such a small class, mm-hmm. we did an awful lot, and we yes. were all very enthusiastic. But there's still, you know, a number of of us that are here that began at the, and we've become a, a close close family, if you like. So we've all, you know, got quite old. (laughs) But we haven't lost our sense of humour. We're doing loads of classes after that. Mm -hmm. Wherever I fancied doing, Honour would find with Tudor. I think that Sister Honour was the cornerstone which knitted us all together. Mm. Our Sister Honour was incredible. She... She was highly intelligent. She used to do things very quietly and she got things done. People like the councillors really got to the stage where they they thought she was the bee's knees, you know. She had a very good relationship with them. She was able, you know, to sort of answer all the questions and demolish any arguments that they had. She was, she was very good. And she did a lot of work at, at far. She would be about five foot seven, very slim. And of course, I think her head must have been shaved. She would be wearing grey or, or navy outdoor clothes. But I can't remember what she wore on her head now. She looked austere, but she wasn't. Very quietly spoken. I liked her very much, yes. I mean, I was still at work, so I wasn't really involved so much with FAR when it was first started. Is it, and then my mum retired and she used to go... I mean, my mum ended up being vice-chair. John Potts, yeah. She was vice-chair and Erica was chairman then. I mean, I was still at work. So I started coming to the lunch clubs on a Wednesday... Anne and Liz Patterson used to do the socials, but obviously it was getting too much for them, you know. So I said, well, look, Mark and I will take the socials over. I spoke to Mark and said, yeah, I don't mind. So we do four socials in the yeah. summer months, because obviously mm-hmm. they're older people, they don't want to come out at night time when no. it's dark. The and it goes back to our parents, doesn't it? Yeah. About caring about your community, doesn't it? Because although Susan and I no longer live in Fenham, it was a big part of my life. Yeah. You were just made to feel like, welcome, weren't you? I used to go to the craft club and I did uh, decoupage. Well, when I was able to, I just can't now, I enjoyed the computer class. Well, I'll tell you how, how it happened. I was... Chairman of Governors at Our Lady in St Anne's Primary School and we needed somebody who knew all about the finances. So I said to Sister Doreen, because she had the qualifications, would she come on the Board of Governors? And she said, yes, provided you'll come on far. Um, Immediately I joined. They put me on as chairman. When I finished work at three o'clock round at the Sacred Heart School round the corner, dashed down here for the last hour, and then into the normal craft class on a Monday, Wednesday sometimes a luncheon club for the bingo, Uh, and then once I retired, I'm I'm never away from the place, it was nearly every day, because it was Monday was the craft, Tuesday Anne and I used to come and peel the potatoes and everything for the luncheon club, after that we'd stay to the sugar craft at night, 
Wednesday we were doing the lunch, the two of them. Thursday was the only day we really had off. So that was the one day I spent with my husband. And then, well, Friday I'm at, I'm at the Marie Curie in the afternoon, the shop, volunteering. And then I'm at come back down here for the computer at night. So I would go out the house about 11 o'clock on a Friday, go home about half past nine at night. Well, of course, he was in bed by then. <laughs> <laughs> He's just given up on... He knew where I was, you know. I think it's just the friendship and everything, because, I mean, I knew Anne beforehand because we used to go to a sugar, cra- sugar craft at the Holy Cross with Jean. And then, of course, we got friends and come back here, and that was it. I saw an advert for calligraphy over at uh, Westgate College. So I signed up for that, and the ladies that were in that class also attended FAR. But FAR was in an ordinary house then. They said, would you like to come and join us? And I said, yes, I would, and I've been there ever since. So I I just loved it. When we went round to FAR, we did all sorts of things. You know, it it was really good. You know, we were in a room round a table and you just all mucked in and somebody made the tea and that sort of thing. But it, it was lovely. The, the camaraderie was great. And although it was a big room, it was divided off so that the committee could meet in that side and we could... How they ever got anything done, I don't know, because it was so noisy. But there was a nice feel to it. God, I've been here for, oh, 50 54 years. I started, I was doing the dinners. Me, Anne and Liz Brown did the dinners then. And just the bingo and things like that. We used to have a bingo on a Thursday night. Uh I can remember going and it was just like a, well, like this, a room like this with a big table and chairs and a cooker. Big pans, great big pans. So I didn't go there very often, very long. And then they built the little far house, a lovely one. It was lovely. It was just the one room, you know, one great big room and had a thing you could put along, a partition. And Mark's office, the kitchen and the toilets, and that's all it was. I went initially to offer the community centre some books because I was having a clear out. When I got there, the tables were all set for lunch and Anne Athy was working on her own in the kitchen. And I knew Anne, but I didn't know anybody else in the area, really, although I had been living here for about 13 years. So when I saw the table set, I said to Anne, oh, didn't realise you had a lunch club. If you ever need a hand, just ask. And she said, well, actually, I could do with a hand today because everybody's missing. So I just came home got the books, went back and helped Anne at the lunch club. So continued to go. Then shortly after, they decided to set up a garden group because Jack Hutchinson, who sadly is no longer with us, an avid gardener, absolutely loved his garden. They purchased a greenhouse, set it up behind Jack's bungalow and we started this garden group. And it was great. It, it snowballed from there. I, be, I got enough confidence to become a church warden. So really, basically, I've got the far to thank for changing my life completely. I was his wife, Jack's wife. I mean, he used to grow all these flowers, you know, from seed. And I used to think, why? Well, buddy, he loved it. It was his hobby. He loved it, absolutely. I mean, that was a greenhouse. And he put all them in, you know. I wow. mean, well, there's a one of it. Oh, there, that's a green house when it first came. What kind of a man was he? A gardener. <laughs> all he wanted was garden, garden, garden. He loved his garden. He had a little car, a little old wreck of a car, and he loved his garden and his car. He was a canny fella. Yeah, yeah. Miss him. Uh, we did a lot of planting did pots and things and grew stuff. And every year we did hanging baskets for sale. And the street used to look great because, you know, people could come and, and pick up a hanging basket for about three pound. And you see, that's Bunty. And George, little George, he used to live in that bungalow there. He's gone as well. 
just nice, friendly, happy people, I would say. Just lovely. Well, I've been attached to far since 2001. It was a friend of mine, the gentleman round there who used to do the credit union. He unfortunately dropped down dead. And they were struggling for someone to do that. And my friend knew I was... I always love figures, you know. Not that I'm an accountant or anything, but I love figures. Anyway, I went round and I thought, oh, well, this is simple enough, you know. So I did that for a few years. Sister Doreen, well, she's the treasurer, and uh, she approached me to see if I would do the books for far. I still do Thursday it. nights. That was a few years later. They used to, on a Thursday night, have a bingo session. And that went on for a number of years. Mm. And once again, it was money and dealing with things, you know. And I sort of dropped into that as well. We just want to serve the community. Alan's 81 this year. I'm 77 this year. But I like to keep active. When we first started, it was sort of like a small community thing. And the word community, that was sort of embroidered over our forehead. And there's people there who's been less fortunate than ourselves. And we just, we just tried to, in a small way at that time, I mean, we're going back 12, 14 years. Oh, easy now. I mean, 13 and, years. You know, it's, now. it's just progress from there. I was here through the first four before this extension was built and the classes just grew and grew and you were getting more and more people in and then I started helping the, uh, the lunch club and it just evolved from there. The lady that started off the parchment, she left and I took over the class and we had about 16 to 20, sometimes 22 people in the class on a Saturday. Oh, we used to help in the kitchen as well. Oh yes, I'm still oh, a yeah. committee member. Oh yes. <laughs> still come to the meetings. And I've come to the craft class whenever I can. No, I was never political. And my sister, who is very political, is starting to rub off on me. <laughs> but I'm still into the nitty gritty type thing. I'll just say, I can have my opinion on that. Doing the Christian thing by helping other people, by getting involved. And it's something we all should do. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. We are all in one big family. I've got five children. I've got seven grandchildren. I was, I've been with kids since I was 12. He was 14. We've been married 37 years. I was 16. But yeah, we've been together ever since. And we met at the West End Boys Club just along the road. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't ever change any of it for the world, I wouldn't. Because it was, I mean, I brought the kids up and in between. I was at college and working and bringing the kids up. And it was just the best time of my life ever. And that's why, really, when I started the Mothers and Toddlers Group, it was because my kids were like, up. Oh, and I just love kids. So I, I thought, well, we'll start this Mothers and Toddlers up, you know. And uh, it was great. And it was good over the road, Debbie. She says, well, I'll, we'll do it together. So we did. And it was lovely. It was on like twice a week, a Tuesday and a Friday. I used to come up, you know, we used to get the bread and the milk and the, we used to always buy them a little treat. We used to make them toast with juice and stuff, you know. And we used to get all the arts and crafts out. We used to do all that. Play games, music time. And they loved it. They absolutely loved it. My husband does a lot more than me now. He runs the allotment and stuff and does all sorts and he takes the kids on trips. This is like the heart of the community, this, you know. It's not just for the kids, it's for like, the, you've seen yourself, like the older people with the groups, you know, and their trips, I mean the kids' trips, and they just love it. Everybody knows for, and you know, and everybody at some time, but most of Fenham at some time have probably used it. Well, my involvement with FAR began probably about 11 years ago and I started coming to the computer group and I never looked back. But I also then started coming to the luncheon club because I had heard how good it was and I've come ever since on a Wednesday 
the lunches are marvellous. Since I've got my mobility scooter, I'm buzzing all over the place and <laughs> getting a bad reputation. <laughs> then I got involved to, um, to be secretary of the management group. And that's good as well, because you, you learn about how much work goes into the place, really. And I like to give a bit back to the community, because I've had a lot out of it. So that's my little giving yeah. back, is being on the committee, I suppose. So I'm the, I'm the youngest of the craft group. I've been coming about three or four years. Yeah. And then when my dad died, I had a little bit of a, a breakdown, to say the least. And they got me a mental health worker. I was Sorry. looking for things in the area for me to do when she asked what I was interested in. And I said card making, because I used to always do them. And I ended up coming down here. Met all the girls, and I was so quiet the first time I came, <laughs> believe it or not. And it's just gone on from there. I've never stopped coming since that day, and it's really helped me. Mm -hmm. it just, yeah. It's like a proper little community group. This place really honestly rescued me. It really did. For me, I first came along when my oldest is a baby. My kids have met people from all kinds of backgrounds, from it's, being here. They are confident and they do go out and they're quite happy, you know, eating out, those kind of things. Not every child is and sometimes what this place has done is acted as a bridge where they'll take them out to places that they might not have experienced before, uh, trying out new activities. It was absolutely from a philosophy of that if everybody's going to join in it has to be very cheap or free and most things that my kids have joined in um, have been free. There's people that live on the same street as me and there are no birthday parties because the vast majority of the kids you know it's a struggle about feeding the kids every week day to day Jenny was born 2000 I've always chatted to people there was a noticeable difference at that time just chatting to mums and things that they felt happy about Christmas coming and being able to afford it. At the time, things like tax credits were fairly new for a whole range of different reasons. Um, there were other things that people could join in and go to. Now, those things have gone, and when you talk to people, there is high stress levels of just even getting the kids to school, buying school uniforms, um, being in debt, um, and it creates quite a hostile atmosphere. I've got involved with Parents Forum that is for special educational needs and disabled kids. And at the minute, you know, they have got future plans that they want to try and expand to be able to fit in a disabled access toilet and changing rooms, a quieter, mm. calmer room. What's important to understand about this place there's always people all the time that mm. are saying oh yeah you know well this is what is happening now how can we include these people in well local people know what local people need don't they I mean it's no good somebody sitting you know out in Pontyland and pontificating about venom it's totally different you know no they know what they need and well, it's a community centre and it's in the middle of the community and that's mm. what you need I mean, if you don't change, you die, you know. You've got to adapt and, and move on. And I mean, what we were thrilled with way back in 94, it's very different now. The needs are very different now. You adapt or you die. It was through the foresight of the likes of Sister Doreen and Sister Honour and uh, Sheila Gent and Aunt Athy that has made this place what it is, put it on the map. A lot of people now know what FAR is, what it's about and what it's saying. But it's their story that goes on. I often tell the little shortened version of this story. Yeah, it was mums who were annoyed, opened up the house, demanded an empty house to be able to be used, and it's grown from that. 
and that story matters as well, that it is possible. All these people, and a lot of them have died, you know, they were older than me, but there was such good company and decent people, you know, and cared about where they lived, but they cared about the people that lived around them. It, it, they weren't on the committee or anything, it was just that that was their nature. They were mm -hmm. caring mm -hmm. and loving and and we miss them very much. Sister Honour, Sylvia Gallagher, Billy Gallagher, Brian Tate, Joan Potts, Terry Welford, Jenny Steele, Doris Turnbull, Jack Hutchinson, Flory Ford, Gloria Fogo, Carrie Athy, Nora Henderson, Sheila O'Dwyer, Jean Hawkins, Bunty Spiller, Margaret Mabut, Andrea Hay, Alderman George Johnson, Mary McGargle, Audrey Woodall, Terry Coney. I've um, been project manager at Far Community Centre since 2001. We've been very fortunate to work with some of the founding members. They've taught me a great deal about how to be a community development worker, why it's important, and taught me a lot about myself as a, as a worker and as a person. The original founders, I think, are an inspiration not just to, to me as a worker, but to the whole organisation. That ethos of volunteering without expectation is really grounded in the organisation. That sense of just wanting to, to make things better, not for yourself necessarily, but for the people that you live side by side with. A community that's, that's ever-changing, that's not static, but the, the steadfastness of the, the people has meant that it's been resilient. It's been resilient to that change and it's been resilient to supporting people within the organisation and outside of the organisation as well. Thank you. 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 Thank you.